Many people are going to be shocked that they don't know enough basic math to solve this problem without a calculator. So let's see if you can figure this out. And uh, what we have is three to this power right here. So this part of the power is called the exponent. So we have four divided by two times two minus four as the exponent of this power. All right, so once again, no calculators, but if you think you know the answer, put that into the comment section. I'm gonna fully explain this in just one second. But before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, come on over to my site, tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so once again, no calculators. And uh, what we're dealing with here seems pretty simple or basic, but uh, there is a couple of areas of this problem that is going to give a lot of you trouble. So we have again, three to the four divided by two times two minus four power. What is the answer? Well, let's take a look at the complete solution right now. So the first step to solve this problem is to figure out what this value is right here. So this part of the power is called the exponent. But if we knew what this entire thing right here was equal to, well, then we can easily determine the power. So for example, if we have three squared, this means take three and multiply it by itself. So here we have two threes, and of course three times three is nine. So what we wanna do here is figure out what all of this is equal to. So effectively, we have a uh, math problem within a math problem. All right, now this brings us to a very, very critical part of basic math, matter of fact, of all of mathematics, and that is something called the order of operations. So a mathematical operator is something like division, uh, multiplication, subtraction, addition, uh, powers, and even parentheses. So the way uh, or the order in which you do this problem will generate different values. In other words, if we uh, maybe start right here with subtraction and then do division, then the multiplication last, where you're gonna end up with one value. Or if you wanna start with multiplication, then division, then subtraction, you'll end up with another value, et cetera, et cetera. So you need to know the correct order to do these mathematical operations. And that brings me to this little phrase right here called PEMDAS. Now, hopefully uh, you know about PEMDAS, and if you don't, I'm gonna give you a quick crash course on the order of operations. So PEMDAS is an acronym, but effectively it's a checklist that goes from left to right. Now, before, before I tell you what these letters stand for, I'm gonna give you a little memory aid, and that is please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. One more time, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. That phrase has been around forever, and hopefully you now you will never forget PEMDAS. Okay, so once again, this is a checklist that goes from left to right, and we're gonna be using this uh, checklist to determine what steps to take in our problem. All right, so the P stands for parentheses, but really it stands for grouping symbols. So anytime you have brackets or these kind of squiggly brackets or these type of parentheses, these are uh, symbols that we use to group numbers, okay? Now, if you have a math problem with, uh, let's say, a set of parentheses and set of, inside of a uh, set of brackets, what you're gonna do is start with the innermost, innermost parentheses, excuse me, and then work your way out. Okay, so that is uh, what the P stands for. Now, not every math problem is going to have parentheses, but if it does, that's where you're going to start. All right, now E stands for exponents, but you can just kind of think of that as powers. So once again, if you had like two to the third power, this part of the power is called the exponent. This part, down, this part down here is called the base. The entire thing is a power. So again, after you uh, uh, determine if you have any parentheses in your problem, you're going to look for powers next. Okay, now again, you may not have parentheses and you may not have powers. So uh, M, D, A, and S, matter of fact, let me just tell you what these stand for, and then we'll talk about um, how to uh, correctly apply the order of operations here. So M stands for multiplication, D stands for division, A stands for addition, and S stands for subtraction. 
Now, so many students, uh, they're pretty familiar with PEMDAS. And they'll be like, oh, okay, uh, I got to do parentheses first, then exponents and powers next, and then multiplication next because we're doing this checklist from left to right, and then division, and then addition and subtraction. Well, that is not the way this works. Okay, so the way this works is the following. So the next thing to do after uh, your parentheses and powers is any multiplication and division. So if you have multiplication and division, you're going to do whatever you see first from left to right, okay? So for example, if you have division and then multiplication in your problem this way from left to right, you're going to do, uh, you're going to do the division first, okay? But if you have multiplication and then the division, uh, to the right of the multiplication, you're going to do the multiplication first because it's what you see first from left to right and addition and subtraction work the same way. Okay, so this is what we have to keep in mind in order to figure out what the correct value is of this exponent. All right, so let's go ahead and apply uh, PEMDAS or the order of operations to our problem. Now, if you want to pause your video and see if you can uh, do this, again, without the aid of a calculator, let's see if you can figure out what the correct exponent is, and then, of course, we'll take the next step in terms of evaluating this power. Okay, so just take it one step at a time and ask yourself, do I have any parentheses? Do I have any exponents? Do I have any multiplication and division? And do I have any addition and subtraction? All right, so let's go ahead and start now. So do we have any parentheses? Well, not really, but you could put a, a set of parentheses up here. So the key thing is to recognize that we have to focus on simplifying the exponent. All right, so do we have any e uh, exponents up here? Well, we do, okay? Obviously, this is an exponent of this bigger problem, but uh, up here, we need to figure out what this exponent is equal to. So we can't take this power until we've figured out what this entire thing is equal to. So technically, you can group these numbers up in the exponent together with a uh, set of parentheses, meaning that you gotta figure out what this entire value is before you can take the power. All right, so if some of you were confused about that, well, hopefully now this makes sense. All right, so now we need to uh, take a look at our M and D and ask ourselves, do we have any multiplication and division? All right, so we're gonna scan the problem, and here we have division, here we have multiplication. What do we see uh, first from left to right? Well, we see division first. Obviously, you can see I have it uh, underlined, so this is our first step. Okay, so four divided by two, we're talking about basic math here. That, of course, is two. All right, so now our problem is three to the two times two minus four power. Okay, so again, you want to be referencing your PEMDAS checklist here and take care of all multiplication and division before you move on to addition and subtraction. So of course here we're going to have to figure out what two times two is before we take that next step. All right, so here is our problem. Now just uh, for those of you that are still learning basic math or forgot all this stuff, I'll keep my little PEMDAS checklist here. So go ahead and simplify this, and then of course we're gonna figure out how to evaluate the final answer in just one second. Before we continue on, it would really mean a lot to me if you hit that subscribe button. Now the reason I want more subscribers is basically I look at everybody that subscribes to my channel as a new student. And as a math teacher, that makes me very happy. So uh, the best way to support this channel and what I do is to simply hit that subscribe button. And if you're gonna do that, hit that bell notification as well so you can get my latest videos. Now remember, uh, irrespective of whether you're a math student or not, if you wanna relearn math, for example, and you've been out of school for many, many years, I have two great courses, my Math Foundation and my Math Skills Rebuilder course. You can find links to all of this in the description of this video. But if you happen to be a student, make sure to check out my full uh, course library. Again, you can find the links to all of this in the description below. All right, so let's go ahead and finish up this problem right now. Okay, so just a few more steps to take to get the right answer here. So we need to finish with all multiplication and division. So we have to figure out what two times two is, get that answer and then subtract four. So two times two is of course four. So we're gonna end up with this expression right here. 
3 to the 4 minus 4 power. All right, so 4 minus 4 is, of course, 0. So now we have this expression right here. So if you got to this point in the problem, that is fantastic. And if you're like, uh, hey, Mr. Two Math Man, I don't really know what 3 to the 0 power is. What does that mean? Well, maybe the answer is 0. Okay, well, that's a pretty good guess. Unfortunately, that's wrong. Anything to the 0 power in math is equal to 1. Okay, so the final answer here is 1. So again, anything to the 0 power is 1. 3 to the 0 is 1. x to the 0 is equal to 1. And any other expression to the 0 power is 1. And if you didn't know that, well, now you know it. And hopefully, you'll learn something not only about powers, but the order of operations. But remember, my videos are not about making anyone feel bad about learning math. If you don't know something, it's just a um, kind of reference point of where you're currently at in your math skills. And again, if you want to relearn mathematics, you definitely can. But hopefully this little video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.